is the Humane Society better at? Um, since sometime in the 90s, we were a foster-based organization. The physical shelter has been here since 2014 when, um, yeah, we became a foster and shelter-based okay. uh, rescue. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, yeah, to me what our work is absolutely founded on is doing whatever we can to either reunite lost pets with their owners or to support owners who need some financial assistance or to help uh, people find a new member of their family. Tell us a little bit about the shelter itself. How many animals do you typically see or how many do you have right now? What, what kinds of animals? Give me kind of some insight. Yeah, so we um, serve cats and dogs only at this time. Um, we usually have around 20 dogs. Right now we're a little less, we have like 17. Um, we <laughs> our cat numbers fluctuate significantly, um, especially during kitten season. Our numbers really go up. Um, we are working to um, get more and more funds always to support spay and neuter. Um, so either low cost spay neuter for families who need some financial assistance um, and also TNR for barn and feral colonies to help try and reduce um, some of the kitten population every year. Um, and we have some other rescues who we partner with as well, share resources who are also working to um, advance TNR efforts. Um, yeah, so in the summer it gets pretty crazy with kittens. We um, are well over 100 cats in our custody. Um, right now we're down to about, um, I believe it's 47 in our custody right now. So feeling a little room to breathe at the moment. What are you guys kind of doing that people on the outside don't see? Sure. Um, so 365 days, um, we are cleaning, feeding, medicating, getting enrichment and exercise time. Um, we have volunteers who help with that, which is amazing. Um, we do have paid staff, um, but also we couldn't offer nearly enough enrichment uh, without volunteer help as well. So we really depend on, on them as well. Um, we also, on... Um, like by appointment any day we might be seeing someone um, to either intake an animal that they for some reason can't keep any longer um, or a stray animal that's been found. Um, uh, we had a, a great success story in my mind at least uh, last week where a finder brought in a dog and she had a microchip and without her ever entering the shelter she literally stayed in the car. We were able to connect her and return her to her owner so that to me was just total success. Um, we do microchip and nail trim clinics um, uh, every other month right now um, in an effort to microchip more animals and reunite them with owners. Um, it helps significantly uh, in that process. Um, we also uh, do adoptions, again, for anyone looking to add a, a new family member. And um, we generally start with an application, which helps us kind of guide and direct to which animal might be the best fit. Um, and then we do meets and, and see how it goes. The Humane Society does event like walks or uh, little things, uh, meet and greets out in the community to yes. let people know. Can you kind of like uh, fill us in on, on what that is or what that's like, what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, those events help us, um, one, introduce the animals to the community. Um, we often do dogs, but occasionally have opportunity to bring cats as well. Um, and then two, uh, puts us out in the community to answer questions. You know, we're always here by email or coming in during our open hours, um, but getting out there in the community sometimes makes it a little more accessible. Um, so the uh, farmer's market is one we added this year, which was a, a big success. Um, so we take dogs, our farmer's market here in Decora is dog friendly. Um, so we take dogs from the Humane Society and walk around and meet people um, and answer some questions. Um, so yeah, we got, what, I think three adoptions out of that. <laughs> so oh people met dogs and fell in love right there at the market. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're working to bring our services um, more accessibly to that area. It is quite a large area and some people um, can't commute that far or, or just it's inconvenient to do so. Um, so we did, uh, last, yeah, last month had our chip and nail um, clinic. Um, kind of in the central area of our coverage area. Um, so yeah, working to, to bring our services um, other than more than just here at this physical location. If someone is going to see this story and wants to get involved, uh, what do you want? What's the process like? Who do they call? Where do they go? What's that kind of? 
Yeah, there's an online volunteer application, and we are working to um, learn how to support our volunteers better. So I know that our orientation materials are, are a bit aged, uh, but there's still some good content there. Um, and I would say it's a, a very rewarding experience. At least that is absolutely our goal, is that it is you know, safe and enriching for the animals and rewarding for the volunteer. That's kind of our, our goal around the volunteer program. And um, most of our volunteers either um, walk or play with dogs or will play with the cats or brush the cats, that kind of thing. Um, we also have volunteers who help with our events and um, some who maybe do some housekeeping <laughs> as staff gets a little behind on it. Okay, and then um, for volunteer purposes, is it, can anybody volunteer? What's like the commitment kind of like for those? Sure, um, we appreciate it if you can commit to a regular schedule, but it's not required. Um, we prefer like two hour shifts, but again, we have some people who come on a long lunch break and that is very welcome. So uh, we're flexible with it. And um, we currently have a age requirement of 10 with a, a parent and then 14 alone. Do you need fosters? Are you looking for uh, any additional staff? Like, tell us uh, what, what that's like. Yeah, we um, love having foster volunteers, um, particularly during kitten season. We have moms and kittens that need a little extra love and you know socialization. That's such an important thing at that young age. Um, also, for dogs, some some dogs just take a little longer to find a home. And being in the shelter with other dogs barking, just constantly hearing and smelling other dogs, it can be stressful, um, more so for some dogs than others. So getting those dogs also into a home is so good for their mental health while they're with us. Cool, okay, yeah, so please, and, and people can get more information about fostering, I'm sure on your website. Yes, there's an application on the website. Yep, you can definitely call. I would say leave a message. We are not often at the desk, um, but we definitely return voicemails, um, or you can email us.